After the previous part, which was about the band dogs according to your request, let's now turn to another topic, which has been around for quite some time, also among your five most frequently submitted requests. Let's talk about the American bullies, their formation and variants. Because this topic is extremely wide and diverse, only talking about the XL size versions would add up a full part, in this part, we will talk about the pocket sized or small and classic sized American bullies. For those of you who prefer breeder interviews in the first place, we have some good news, we have already had an appointment last year with a prominent American bully breeder for an interview, but this was cancelled for reasons beyond our control. We will try to follow up later this year. So, why are they interesting, why and when did the American bully dog breed or type come about? American bully is a designer dog breed or type that was developed almost entirely in the 1990s. In a way, we can say that they were created by the so-called hip-hop generation, for themselves and for their own needs they created these dogs in which the Afro-American community played a huge role in part because of their own needs in the 1990s. Let's see what were these needs and demands? Their aim was to create a cool, muscular dog, which resembles the classic American bull-type breeds such as the American Pit Bull and American Staffordshire Terriers, but they desired a more trouble-free dog who can be handled much easier in urban circumstances. They wanted this dog to be specifically human and family-friendly, but they did not want them to be aggressive and wanted to reduce their prey instinct level, as these could have meant a problem in a densely populated metropolitan environment. They wanted them to be less active without the constant need for movement and walks, so that the owner could spend more time in front of the TVs and do not have to get up so frequently like with an active pit bull terrier or Amstaff. For these purposes, the development of the new breed, or type, or whatever you call them, began in the 1990s, often in metropolitan Afro-American neighborhoods. The basis of the selection were some show line pit bull and Amstaff species, specifically, individuals who were more full-bodied and were less dog-aggressive types. According to experts, this was at first a natural selection process, which was not intended at all to create a new breed, rather, serve the needs of a contemporary social group or generation. In this sense, in quotation marks, this whole thing was a new model, since it was not a breeder's organization that was behind the processes, but many small breeders who worked together because they understood the needs of their time and the desires of a generation. In this sense, we can also interpret this process as a kind of early crowdsourcing program within the dog world, and perhaps it is no coincidence that this new breed developed at such a staggering speed, these dogs have become popular in the US and then almost everywhere around the world. In addition to the big cities, especially in Virginia and South Carolina, many people have been involved in the initiative and joined the program. What was the final result? A dog that in many details met the needs. Although the stock was mixed, different in size, it was similar in behavior and really met the expectations in character. And what happened next? What is always used to happen? As these dogs became popular, more and more business interests were built around them. The ABKC or American Bully Kennel Club was formed and then the UKC or United Kennel Club started to deal with them. Exhibitions were organized, breeding was partly institutionalized, and, as always in such cases, breeders appeared who, in order to sell more dogs, directed the breeding towards extremes. This is how the pocket size, the dwarf size, the standard, including classic and extreme, size, and finally the XL-sized American bullies were formed. And it went on and in recent years the miniature and the magnum-sized American bullies have also appeared. In the meantime, Several people have also attempted to find out what other breeds were used in the design and development of American bullies. Which seems almost certain. 
All versions are based on Pitbull and Amstaff show lines. For pocket and standard versions, English, Old English and American Bulldogs were used, and in the creation of larger versions Cane Corsos might have an important role. In the case of the pocket-size bullies, Patterdale Terriers might have had a major role. We wouldn't go into describing heights, sizes and weights here and now, we wouldn't bore you with all this, and you can find a lot of data about them. More importantly, what you should understand is, that how special the development of American bullies was in dog circles, which can be called, in some ways, a, a true community movement and action. A group of people thought that what they needed was a family-friendly, non-animal aggressive dog that fits well into the metropolitan environment and was free of conflicts, and thought that this dog should meet the needs of that generation, not some breed standards what was originated from the late 19th or early 20th century. And the fan community successfully created a dog like this. However, it is equally important to see what business, institutionalization, and the world of shows make with a dog breed, talking about the American bullies, or others. Perhaps there is not any better example for this, than to have a look at the fashionable extreme forms of American bullies, to see, where they started, and where they get to buy our days. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and do not forget to hit that bell button as well.